All right, so right here, I've got new site four. I'm looking in here. Um, I have got my package.json file, but I don't have any node modules. So I'm gonna have to do npm install to install my node modules. And this is just because this morning I got a notification uh, saying that uh, I need to free up space. So I literally just swept all my node modules from my local machine uh, and I deleted this one. So I'm gonna have to reinstall all the packages of new site four uh, to get this app up and running. Might take a while. I don't know how many of y'all are from Chicago, but today is like the first day of summer, pretty much. Went from 40 plus days of cloudy, crappy out to 88 degrees and summer out from here going forward, probably. Can everyone hear me? Yep, you just <laughs> okay. said that with so much disdain in your voice. <laughs> Only because my air conditioner didn't work last night and I spent half the day with the AC person trying to get my AC running. Yeah. And because like we didn't have a spring, it's just like crappy out and now it's just not comfortable summer. It's like, oh God, it's like the hot, hot summer. And I don't know if you've noticed, I'm very pale and I don't like the sun. I'm like, I'm like, okay, a, va so I'm like a vampire. No Florida for you. Got it. Yeah. Even though I, I like Florida, I just can't, I can't be in the sun for a long period of time. My, my neighbors, most of them are transplants, not to derail here, but like this last week, it's been actually unseasonably warm. We got a, a blast of 90 plus, 95 and they're oh my gosh it's hot and they're looking at me and i'm going no no we're no, good no. <clears throat> oh yeah <clears throat> yeah i just need to spend several months in a super warm place and then i gotta come back here and i'll be like oh this is cool yeah you i don't have know. winter i know yeah. yeah when i was i was stationed in 29 palms uh which is like mojave desert I remember coming back to Chicago on leave and it was like 65 degrees out and it was beautiful out. And I was like, my buddy had to put a blanket around me because I was so cold. I was like, yeah, anyway. I spent my high school years in Chicago. I, yeah. as much as I love that city, I do not want to live there. No. Yeah. I don't blame you. All right. Uh, what did I just do? Uh, I npm installed, I npm installed again. I've got a bunch of high vulnerabilities. You can also always run that npm audit fix that will try to fix them. Um, if we run that, we can get rid of hopefully some of them, hopefully the critical ones, um, but typically I just ignore them. Um, uh, let's see. All right. Cool. Anyway, that's good. And now I'm going to do npm start just to get this up and running. Hopefully everything's working. So we've got our backend API We're listening on 3001. We have our React app uh, and local is 3000. And let's go back here. Let's start opening up, uh, opening up uh, some of these uh, React components. All right. So here we go. So everything is still working, hopefully. I don't know why. Okay, there we go. Great. <clears throat> I can take a look at uh, my network. So every time I go to national, it goes to APIs. Uh, so you can kind of see where it goes. I go to here, 
can see grabbed article 19. Yeah, so you can see all the APIs being executed there. All right. <clears throat> go home, see if search is still working, VOL. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear that. Look at this API. So, yeah, we got right there where I like. Okay, so that's working. Return eight search results. Great. Um, if there's time, maybe I'll do this as well. Uh, but right now, let's go ahead and uh, let's talk about, uh, let's go to the AP articles API. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about environmental variables. So if we run like how to uh, add environmental variables in React, and custom, I don't know if that's right. I'm gonna look at Stack Overflow. Uh, that's from 2018. I mean, really shouldn't change. Uh, so it looks like, hmm, warning, do not store any secrets such as API keys in your React app, dun, 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 dun. Um, <clears throat> so, where is it? So you might see some things like this in your code base. So if you have an environmental variable, you'll have like a difference between like your development and your production, like where to look at for like APIs or like API endpoints and stuff. So you, sometimes you might see some stuff like this. So like if the environmental variable does not equal production, then, uh, if it equals production, so analytics disable. So <clears throat> you'll disable the analytics on your React application because there's no point in keeping track of specific analytics of how your application is performing, where users are doing, if you're just doing it in your development environment. So this is kind of an example of, hey, if only if you're in the production environment, uh, then have your analytics running. So. Let's see. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna go inside of here. I'm gonna create a .env file. And I'm just gonna say uh, URL equals uh, localhost slash articles, like so. And here I should act, be able to access by doing process.env.url. Um, I can say like uh, dev URL or development, like something like that. And I'm just gonna come over here, run start. Hopefully everything's still working. <clears throat> um, let's check to see if this works. Uh oh. All right, it is not working. Let's see. Why didn't it work? Local overrides. That should work. Oh, that's the old one. Do I really have to do that? Oh, let's take a look at this. I've heard of .env before. If we have to do that, we'll do that. Uh, probably. That doesn't have a lot of downloads. Hmm. So here's one example. 
but this is all in ES5. How to add environmental variables, React. So see, that's not the right way. So there's a bunch of different libraries to add environmental variables. <clears throat> Um, didn't we do this yesterday? It worked. Ooh, yeah, so that is not working. Let's see what's going on. Is that right? Let's check it out. Uh, it's still not working. Okay, all right, now it's working. So in with React, this is just a s specific uh, um, behavior of React. So React, if you want an environmental variable, you'll cre create a .env file on the same level as your uh, node modules, your public so and source directory. So you have an env file here and notice how it's already grayed out it's because in your git ignore file that comes uh comes with the create react app script it already has that dot env uh grayed out because they might assume they already like assume that you're going to probably have some environmental variables uh in your react app but with react if you want to access those or if you want to name those variables and have react access them you have to ha uh, have your variables prepended with react underscore app underscore. And then in order to access them, you run it's just process dot env dot the name of your environmental variable. And that's in react. And react already like that's like comes kind of pre built in with React as far as the naming of it. So here, um, yeah, I can add stuff like, uh, let's see. Um, so like, for example, Like you can say, like, I'm already doing React development. Uh, React, so app, um, uh, like staging. So uh, Um, so when you're doing, uh, d development for a company or for an organization, you won't just have your, your, the code on your local machine. Uh, and there's, there's going to be like several stages of testing 
and before it ever gets deployed to the end user to the world. So typically you'll do your development on your local machine and then you'll make a PR, someone will approve it or provide feedback. But once it's approved, it'll go to what is called staging, which is essentially a clone of production, but only the company has access to. It's called like a staging environment. So it's all the code that is going to be eventually released to production. So that staging environment is going to be a totally, essentially like a clone of production, but only internal uh, employees, engineers have access to. And it's literally just to make sure everything's working right again once it's like deployed uh, to an API or deployed to the web services that everything's working. And then once it passes all those, the staging tests, then it can get approved and deployed to production and all of that. So that's would be like some other API endpoint. So here with like logic, you can say like, hey, like if process.env. React staging, like if that's like true, then go to one API endpoint, else go to another API endpoint. So you can add some environmental variables uh, with that. So you can even say like React, like in testing, and you can literally just say like true. And you're like, hey, if that's true, then route, use another API. If it's false, use another API. You can do all that in your, just with environmental variables. All right. Uh, questions about environmental variables? You didn't have to do any kind of import or anything, right? That's automatic done behind the scenes. Okay. Yep. React scripts does that for me. So. Uh, and the, the actual in, in your environmental variables, do they need to be in all caps? Is, is that a, um, is that just a, I believe I've never seen them in lowercase. So I don't know if they have to be, but I think best practice they're environmental variables, meaning they're like constant variables. So they'll never change. So they're typically probably all in all caps all the time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It worked. So. Oh, awesome. nice. Thank you. <laughs> cool. <clears throat> so environmental variables, this will come in handy later on when we're dealing with uh, uh, Django and deploying to the web uh, when it comes to testing. All right. So I'll just keep that there. Uh, I don't need to change my URL endpoint at all. <clears throat> so next... Uh, before I actually go into converting all these to class base, let's talk about um, error handling. And I don't think I'll be able to have um, I can kind of simulate some error handling as well. Uh, so um, I guess first let's talk about loading because loading um, if you look at this app, so if I like do a hard refresh, there is like a little delay. Oh. Well, I, that's loading, but I don't know why that's taking so long. <clears throat> but it, there was like a second before the, the pages, the articles actually showed up. And that's typically it's, that's not that big of a deal, but when you're dealing with other third-party APIs or other API endpoints, it could take a while for you to get that data back. And I don't know if you've ever noticed on like Facebook, Instagram, or Reddit or whatever, when something is loading, like it almost looks like there's stuff on the page, but it's like, it shows like a, what is it called? A shimmer card shimmer, uh, CSS. <clears throat> So I think you may have seen something like this before, like if you're on a social media site or anything like this, that that's like an indication of like, hey, this is essentially indicate that it's loading, but it's kind of like, oh, it, from like a user perspective, like, oh, there's something there. It just hasn't showed up yet. And this kind of beats like, like a, a loading indicator, but this is essentially a loading indicator saying, hey, there's 
some data that's just waiting to come back. We're just going to placeholder this year. So it looks like there's stuff already populated on the screen. So it doesn't look like the app is broken. Um, so we can actually add some loading in here uh, and we can kind of simulate a, a longer API request. So let's just go to, where is that? So that is the home page. So the home page displays the article list. So here, so we can, um, what do we wanna do? Let's kind of simulate this fetch articles API taking a little bit. Um, and we can do that using the set timeout, timeout JavaScript. Uh, so it's set timeout. We'll take uh, some function you wanna call and then a delay of uh, when that function is called. So even though this API endpoint, this API is really quick right now, uh, it could eventually in the future be slow. So we can kind of simulate that. So I'm gonna just create a function called const grab or get data. And that's literally going to be run a set timeout. And that function is gonna call And let's say it takes a second. And I'm gonna do get data. Let's just see if this still works. Why didn't it work? Maybe if I just do the set timeout. Oh, dang it. See how it's taking a while? So that kind of just simulates how long it might take to show up. We can do it like for even like two seconds. So it's like, all right, it's loading, it's loading. All right, yeah. So what we can do <clears throat> is um, create a loading indicator or something. So I'm just gonna grab some loading indicator React Bootstrap. I don't know if they have one. Uh, components. Come on. They don't have a loading indicator. Spinner. There we go. <clears throat> cool. Uh, does anybody have a preference what, what we use? Uh, I'll use this, why not? Uh, so here, let's just grab, we've got a form, we've got a spinner. Let's come up here, import the spinner from React Bootstrap. Uh, and then the spinner, set of, it's a fetching articles. We can come over here and now we can kind of see, hey, it's fetching articles. <clears throat> um, but we don't always want this to show up. So like it fetch the articles, but it's on here now. So what we can say is I'm creating a new state variable called is loading, or I'm just gonna call it loading, set loading. And initially it is false. All right, why is that? Okay, so loading, set loading. So in here, what do I want to see? So right when it loads the page, I'm gonna say set loading, to true, comes in here, 
So that's loading to true. And then when I get a response back, after it sets the articles, I'm gonna say set loading to false. So now I can come over here, just do some conditional rendering. I can say loading and then do this button spinner thingy. Come down here. There we go. So now if I do a hard refresh, it's fetching the articles and now we've got the articles. And you can even like create, <clears throat> yeah, you can have this loading on every single page if you'd like to. Um, so I can also do like the handle search as well. So uh, if link set loading, to true, then when it gets back, set loading to false. Uh-oh. All right, there we go. And now if I'm like looking for something, search, see how it like showed the loading symbol initially for like a second. So VOL. You're going to see the loading like for a split second. So you get split second and then it returned the response. So that's one way you can do loading. Um, <clears throat> yeah. What questions do you have about that? Can I see the loading button again? Yeah. So, so this is just. React Bootstrap, I just copied and pasted it in here. Um, you can use, you can create your own loading component. It could be anything, it could be an image and you can have an image displayed here saying like uh, loading or I don't know if you've ever been on Amazon when there's like an error in on Amazon, it shows like a picture of like a, one of the dogs. Has anybody see that before? No? Mm -mm. <laughs> no? Yeah. Yes, like it's it's usually on the app. Um, if like there's an error, like the page doesn't load or some or so, if some error occurs, it's usually like a picture of one of them. And those are employees' dogs. If you didn't know that, um, <clears throat> yeah, fun fact about that. <laughs> All right, can I see the state one more time? Yep. So yeah, I'll just quickly uh, recap what we did. So to talk. Uh, to incorporate loading just to have a better user experience for when a user is visiting your site and you're using APIs that may take some time, some unknown time to retrieve data. I created a loading state variable that has is initially set, set to false. So this loading state variable is going to be a true or false, it's gonna be a Boolean value, whether or not the page is currently loading, not the page, but the data is currently loading. So initially the data, there isn't data at loading. It's gonna be false right when the component mounts. But when we dispatch to an API to retrieve some data, we don't know how long it's gonna take for the API to give us a response for, for that data. So this use effect, right when it, the component mounts, it executes. So we're gonna say, set loading to true because it's going to initialize this API request. So we initialize this API request. We're simulating a two second response for, for this API because typically this API is going to be really quick because all the data is on our API server uh, located within this app. So we're simulating a two second response. So it reaches out to the API. Then we get a response back. We set the response or the articles to our state. And now we can officially say, hey, set loading to false so it's no longer loading. And down here, we have just some conditional rendering. If loading is true, display this loading indicator. Um, and once it's done loading, so once loading is false, so it's done getting that API 
data back, the loading indicator no longer shows up. So again, come over here, it's fetching the articles, took two seconds, there we go. All right, questions about the loading. All right, so let's talk about some errors. Um, in here, we've, we've done like fetch, we've done this try catch um, using async await. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna, let's try to do this with, I wonder if I can use an a actual third party API. Um, to kind of simulate an error maybe. Um, let's see, what can I use? Um, let's use that JSON placeholder because that might provide us with uh, something like this, but I just want posts. So, and this might actually simulate our, uh, what the hell? Why is it dark? Um, yeah, we'll just use this. That was, that's weird. <clears throat> um, so I'm just gonna quickly create a, uh, not articles, a post page.js. Um, RCS and uh, H1 posts. And let's go ahead and post page. I'm going to create an another route where it's just going to go to uh, posts and it goes to the post page. Uh, let's see. So if I come over here and I go to slash posts, I get posts. And then in here, I just want to dispatch to that uh, API. So I'm going to come over here, posts. So I'm going to create a fetch posts API or fetch articles by ID. So it's gonna look somewhat from similar to here, but it's gonna be fetch posts. It's not gonna take any values. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to, what do I wanna use? Uh, should I use async await? Async. I can say let response equals await fetch JSON placeholder let data equals await uh, response dot JSON and I'm just going to console log data initially. <clears throat> Ooh. On a uh, simu API. Yeah, anyway. Fetch posts. So I can come down here. Fetch posts. So what I'm doing is just going to try to simulate some errors because uh, I want to kind of see what this data looks like. Um, and yeah. So when I go to clear, oh, let's go to posts.
should bring up old page like so. <clears throat> use effect. So inside of my use effect, this is where I'm gonna dispatch that API, articles API, fetch posts, dot then, get a response back. I'm gonna just console log that response. And down here, I'm only gonna simulate this once. So I just have an empty array initially. So if I just wanna execute use effect once, I use an empty array and that's it. Uh, oh, actually I'm going to not console log the posts. I'm just gonna return data. But I guess I'll console log data as well. So here we go. We have data here. Um, I just wanna see, it's probably a promise pending. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so here I get the response. Um, so I'm no longer doing the dot JSON. So I'm not returning that, I'm not converting that response into JSON. I just want to see what that response looks like. So I'm console logging, doing a wait response. I'm assigning that to data and then I'm just console logging that data. So you can see we get a response object back that has headers, okay, redirected, false status, uh, 200, all that stuff. Uh, so here, um, we do, can do a try catch. So the thing with the fetch API is that it will always return a successful response. So it will always return something, whether it's 500 air, 404, 200. So it'll rarely ever uh, come down to this catch. So what we can do is just say like, uh, So response.json and say we have like an error on here. We can say like if data.error, usually um, if there is an error, it will explicitly tell you that there's an error and there usually will be like a key with an error. And we can return with like, there was an error or uh, throw catch in JavaScript. Try catch. So try catch. Oh, shoot. <clears throat> so if we do get an error in our try, we can immediately throw an error. So, so like throw, there was an error and it will throw this message down to this catch right here. And then we can console error it if we wanted to. So I can simulate that, just say like, hey, if true, uh, or I'm gonna just simulate, let it error equals true. There's gonna be an error. Uh. See so, yeah, how like it actually says like it's like it throws an error in your console. There was an error. So that's kind of nice. If I only console logged it, it'll just say there was an error. So that's the difference between that console log and console error is that will explicitly say like, hey, console error will say, bam, there is an error. <clears throat> um, so you can actually throw an error, but typically you'd want like some message to um, the user. So here, so I'd be like, so if error, I'd actually just return, there was an error. 
or I'd probably do something like this. Uh, um, air like that. And then if I go back to my front end, uh, I'm going to create set or uh, use state const posts set posts, just like the set articles use state. Uh, no. So in here, I can say set posts is, is the response. However, I can say like if response.air exists, I can say air set air. Uh, null or so if air I can say set air uh, there was an air getting posts else set the posts <clears throat> then I can just like create something that displays the post, displays posts if there are posts. Uh, return posts.map post ID or just post. Uh, Return key uh, post that idea. So let's first see if this actually works. Uh, display posts. I think it should work. Um, looks like I need that there so display posts so let's initially say false for the error because we're not simulating an error yet all right we're getting an error cannot read properties null of reading map all right so we can say if posts exist then try to get the posts so there we go we got a bunch of titles um make that a paragraph tag There we go. So we got a bunch of posts, <clears throat> but now if there's an error, so say we, so we simulate got an error in our response, something like nothing, because the response will tell you whether it's a 200 error, the status code, or if nothing shows, shows up. So we got an error, but nothing's showing up. So here again, we can do some like, hey, if there's an error and H2 or the H4. When I'm setting the error to, it's not just a true or false value. It's actually going to be the error message. So this could be a Boolean value, true or false to show the error. And then you can have a separate state variable called message or error message and set that message. But I'm just going to set error to null. And then if I get an error, I'm going to set it to the message string message. So if error exists, so if there's a string there, I'm gonna, I want to display the error message. So there's an error getting these posts, like so. Questions about showing error messages and responding with uh, error messages. <clears throat> Hmm. 
there. So if we don't get an error, then we get everything. New site. So it's fetching articles, we're loading. Now we have the articles. All right. So what questions do you have? How do you determine like a comprehensive list of errors you'd want to account for or catch for? Um, typically, it's just uh, usually with API data. So you'd want to, if like the API data is not there, you'd want to display an error. So that's just, so th that's pretty much the list right there. Um, okay. As far as like React, when you're dealing with APIs, when you're dealing with the back end, like you might throw an error if data is missing uh in your and your back end uh, but yeah you might throw an error if it takes too long for it to grab some data but yeah but on the front end it's just kind of like if the api doesn't respond with what you expected it to that's why you gotta kind of have to make sure that uh you have to kind of like look through and parse through your API response to make sure it comes through. Like, I think if we did, what was it? Ticketmaster way back when. If you looked at that response, I think it actually like said, gave like an example of the response. Oh crap, I don't even know what this is. It could be, I don't even know. I forgot it. So, uh, I just want to see if. Give like a nice example of what the response is. I like the weather APA. What was that open weather? <clears throat> oh, great. Oh, cool. Um, Don't steal my API keys. Why is this black? Uh, so yeah, this doesn't give, maybe that's it. I don't know. But if I had like something so like right here, I would say code 400 message wrong latitude so you test to see like hey if it's code 200 or 400 if it's 200 that means it's a good re re response if it's 400 uh then do something so if you're doing that api with here you'd be like the uh or like down here you'd be like hey if data dot code equals 400 that means there's an error then display their message. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Uh... <laughs>